Hey everyone, so as you may as well know as much as I know, I am not capable of modernizing Aikido myself. I'm acquainted to the traditional or classical side of Aikido, uh, kind of the dry part without sparring and uh, also just, just it's, it's, it's a fairly flawed system in terms of effective self-defense system. Uh, so I do need help with that and uh, fortunately with the help of Patreons, my supporters on the Patreon page, which you can by the way check if you want, if you want to support, <laughs> that allowed me to, to actually fly to UK, uh, to the city of Leeds, where a colleague of mine lives, his name is Marius, he's also Lithuanian but very well spoken in English. He has a lot of years of uh, experience in security, he has a lot, a lot of experience in, in real setting, he was attacked and had to defend himself and others many, many times. And also, interesting enough, where the Aikido principle is to defend yourself and others, that's what he had to do as security, not just to kick ass or hurt people, but really defend uh, not only himself, but even the attacker as well. So very much Aikido. He also has a degree in sports science, so he has a good mind of understanding how things work, how the dynamics work of the body, and also the scientific method of looking at what works and what doesn't work. So really no space for Bushido. So with the intensive time we spent, we trained for three days in an intensive way, we also spoke a lot and tried many things, trained. The goal was to narrow the gaps that I have with my Aikido versus real setting, to see if Aikido techniques can be made effective and how. And we also looked at many different questions and practices of self-defense in a real setting. The first video will be a fragment of our training, which is going to focus on body movement in self-defense, also stability, coordination, very important points. While the next video will continue with footwork, also we will look at developing how we try to develop and how we developed some of the Aikido techniques in an efficient way. Some of them actually failed, but we documented that as well. And last but not least, Marius also helped me with his, with his experience in, in boxing, in MMA. He helped me prepare for my Aikido versus MMA second round, which is going to happen late in the month of April. So we documented this and more, and now I'm going to leave you with the video to enjoy these benefits of the training, a lot of valuable information, a lot of valuable tips. I hope you'll appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and now I'll let you go to the video. So the first idea, like I said, is to be able to move properly. Usually people can't because of the nature of the jobs and stuff, right? So the glutes are weak, stabilizers are weak, so they can't really um, keep themselves in balance and you know being stable and, and so on. So essentially, you need to determine whether you are able to you know keep the positioning and stuff. I usually use the test, but that comes from therapy, you know. Test like this, yeah. moving, yep. Yoga helps you. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yoga helps you and stuff, right? So your glutes should be all right. I'm almost falling now, but doesn't matter, right? It's all right. All right? It's all good. Right, so you need to get... Just check your range of motion first as well. So just squat down. Yep. So obviously, you know... Yoga helps you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yoga helps you. Just do a squat. It's fine. Go back to the other one. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. What you need to do now, you need to get into a comfortable position where you feel, sta feel stable at. But essentially, the ultimate goal is to be changing your feet, right positioning, and still being able to move and change the direction, right? So keep it moving either forward or back right without leaning too much so this is how it has to be stable everything has to be stable right so you can lean forward if you, only if you feel strong enough right so this is something that i can do yeah. with the external force is applied i might fall over right so there's always risk in the world again right so if you get into different angles right and you can't move in the angle right you should you should probably work on it Make sense? So, I mean, when it comes to drills for the feet and stuff, I usually start from simple, depends where the guy is at. And let's say if you take someone like, like basketball players, they don't need a lot of work, essentially. Yeah, they, they just, um, because of the nature of the sport, they're quite good at it. You know, but that's one of the things that they teach 
It's just moving, running, changing direction, right? Then they give a ball and, you know, then you dribble, dribble, whatever you call that, <laughs> right? And then you move around. So essentially what I want you to do is keep the same stable positioning and move in different angles. And just keep moving and making sure you end up in the same position, right? All the time. So you're always moving. Yeah, you're moving. So if you're my opponent, I want to move around you and always be stable, right? It doesn't mean that during the transition of that, you're going to be stable. It's nearly impossible, you know, when you're acting and stuff. Especially for self-defense, you can't really spend a lot of time analyzing the person or, you know, few people that is, is everything's super quick so you need to consider that as well you need to kind of know before what you're gonna do but that's going back to the video that we're gonna make about the factors that you need to consider right so straight away you have to realize what you're dealing with so let's say you're a taller guy you probably have a longer reach so I need to be a bit out right so that's the safe zone so either you want to be very close or very far away from me so let's say I can't reach you and I'm stable, so it's fine, I can move around, I can run away, whatever I wanna do, right? It's fine, so you can't really, it's difficult, you know, for you to get me. You might step in, but then I just, I can just step out. Yeah, it's difficult for you to catch me, right? So when you're super close as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The risk goes down, unless the guy is a wrestler. But then, you know, you can't, you can't pretend, you don't know the skill level of the person. It's very simple, right? So, footwork that I usually do, that's complete amateur level. It's making sure people know how to move, because all they do is walk yeah. or climb the stairs, right? And also moving back is super important as well, right? You have to realize that. So, just moving around, seeing what it's like, making sure you're in the place. So, if you move around to me. So, just move around you? So yeah. Kind of yeah. Steps, yeah. Or? So, if you're working with a partner, you can always increase the distance. So you're crossing your legs. I need to make sure. Crossing yeah, I go cl too close. So you're always facing. You're moving around. You're always facing. So if, if you're chasing me, if you're chasing me, I should always be aware of where I am, right? So I can either counter or get so close that you know it's it's much safer to me, right? So that's the thing that you have to just work on, right? Just moving around, seeing, but you have to keep that stability in. That's the number one thing. Whatever you do, whatever the skill is, it's always stability, at least from my point of view, right? So once you've done that, you need to go and look for the uh, maybe positions that you have to get into to keep you unstable. So let's say if, if I'm avoiding a punch, whatever, I usually, well, well we, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, whatever it is, right? And at first, usually people are very unstable in this end. And they might get to, because of the gravity, they might get to the point where they are, like this, because all it takes is a drop, essentially, right? They, but they can't move out, they don't have enough strength. But that's to do with, you know, physiological stuff. So you have to work on that. Um, so, just getting into those positions, so, so dropping and squatting. Yeah. I mean, one of the best ways, I, I could actually find to work on my balance. It's just it's a simple traditional martial arts stuff. So you just change direction, change the levels, right? You move around, you move your torso, yeah. So you move it, that's the Cossack squat. You move it, right? So you find it difficult at some point, it's a bit difficult to move, right? Once you do that enough times, you obviously physiologically you get stronger you know you, you get more confident right so now you can move around being stable right now you need to add speed and quickness and power and everything else so i've got loads of drills so for changing let's say changing your feet position right it's a very simple drill that i do so what we want to do essentially we want to feel good in the environment that we're moving right um and in order to do that you have to place yourself in that environment, right? So you need to change stances, you need to play, essentially. And I know people don't like it, you know, but that's, that's the point of it. So just doing stuff like this, 
everything's doing well on your feet, just being light on your feet and being able to change force, just doing this. Yeah. Now, once you're done with this, once you're, you're fine with that, it's fine, right? You change this side. And you go back. Right, do you feel a, a bit of balance, right? Yeah, so, it's essentially called like this. It's just one of the drills, whatever you want to call it, boxing drill, kickboxing drill, wrestling drill, whatever you want to call it, right? It's a drill for movement.